Hi, this is Cassandra from Homeschool Peace. In front of me right now, I have the new paleontology science unit from The Good and the Beautiful. In this video today, I'm gonna to be taking you through this new format and layout of The Good and the Beautiful science units because there have been a lot of changes from their old format. I'm going to be walking you through what I ended up ordering as well as giving you both some positives and negatives of this new layout. In today's video, I'm really going through the formatting changes with these new science units. I'm not diving deep into paleontology itself or giving you a sample lesson in this video. I do plan to share that in an upcoming video, but for today's video, I'm really more talking about the changes of the Good and the Beautiful science units. So let's get started by taking a look at the course book. So the first thing to really look at is what is the course book? So when you are ordering your information, you do need to have a course book. And this course book, you just need one per family. And inside this course book, you're gonna have all of the lesson material. It has also the vocabulary cards as well as lesson activity cards. So it's all in one. And it comes with a front and back cover as well as it's bound on the side. And that's if you're ordering the printed version. There is a PDF version you could order, but it is either or. So of course I ordered the printed version. Now with the printed version and this having a course book, I think one of the really benefits of having this as a separate book is really for new families that haven't really used the good and the beautiful science material in the past. You know, whenever it previously came as a science unit, if you have any experience with their previous units, it would come as just a loose packet of eight and a half by 11 sheets shrink wrapped. So whenever you opened it, you needed to be ready to be able to get those pages in binder and get the other pages in the student books and make sure you have everything together or you could really lose a lot of pages. So you had to be really ready to go. And then it was also a little challenging to figure out which pages are the teacher's book, what are the student pages. And if it was your very first time putting something together, it could be a little overwhelming just trying to figure out how to prepare one of the science units for the first time. Now, now, being a parent that has now used the Good and the Beautiful Science units for the last four years, I actually have some other thoughts the other way. You know, I can see the positives of having everything in one and it being easy to say, just get this teacher's or course book and you have all your information. But I do have some cons to having it set up this way and that's what I'm gonna go into next. The first thing I would say is just the durability of this teacher's book. I guess I was expecting maybe the cover to be a little bit thicker and just maybe the back cover as well, just the actual cover itself. I wonder over time, you know, will this stay within the binding or will this tear out at all? I'm using it say maybe one cycle, if I use it a couple times with my kids, you know, how will it look? It's hard to say because I just got it, but it is one of these things I'm not quite sure how the durability will be of this book. The other thing that I would say that I was actually a little confused about is that the vocabulary cards are included right within the actual bound book. So I use these cards on our science wall. So I will still need to go ahead and tear these out of this book and then go ahead and still laminate them. And probably my concern there is I'm not the best at tearing out pages for some reason. When I try to tear out my kids' pages, I normally you know, make a big mess of it at the bottom and I don't get a great tear. So hopefully these pull out well and I'm able to laminate them. But I do feel like it's a little odd that it's included in here. I would have almost loved to see this as a separate standalone pack that I would have received. So I would have received this course book, but a separate pack for things that I will need to actually prepare or um, laminate before using the lessons. The other thing with having just this small coil bound book, I guess when I heard that it was first coming like this, I was excited thinking this would be like a standalone book that would have everything in it and I wouldn't need to actually have a three ring binder. Unfortunately, it is something that I'm probably still going to have to use a three ring binder because I need a spot to put all of the vocabulary cards, and any of the activity cards that I'm going to be laminating. So there's things I'm gonna be tearing out of here and needing to laminate, and then I need somewhere for those to go. So I have thought through different things. I can get this book itself hole punched and put into the binder. Um, I could, if I really wanted to, remove the binding. You know, that's obviously an option. Hate sort of having to mess up this book itself, but it just feels like I'm still needing a separate binder instead of having everything 
just inside this particular book because I really don't have any spot to store those additional cards. The other thing to note is the age so, or grade. So for this particular book, you can see it is for grades three through eight. In their previous uh, units, for most of them, they have started more around the kindergarten age, going up to sixth or seventh grade. So they're definitely, it seems like they may be making a change with the grade levels for these units. So for this one being third through eighth, I ended up picking up for this student journal, which will get there soon, your third through sixth. So my kids are though on the younger side. Next year, I will actually still have a first grader and a second grader. So it'll be interesting to see how do these lessons fit with those grades. I would love to share more with you after I've had some experience teaching my kids. You know, can my younger kids still keep up with this since it is now designed for a little bit of an older age. Um, so that's something of a change just to make sure that you're aware of. So next I wanna take a look at the actual student journal itself. So the student journal has all of the pages that the student will be marking up, working on as part of the lesson. Previously these student pages used to be mixed in with the actual teacher's information or at this point it's now the course book. It was all mixed in one and it would have been shrink wrapped together and then you would have had to take it out and put some of these pages in a binder and these pages in a different binder. So obviously having all of the information already prepped in a separate journal for your student will definitely make things easier. I go back to the original thought of, I feel like some of these changes would really help a new family coming in to the good and the beautiful for the first time because they would only have to pick up, you know, this teacher book and whatever journal that they would need for their student. For somebody like myself who has been using the good and the beautiful for a while, you know, for my family, I have three kids. I did choose to pick up the printed version of each for each kid. I did question, you know, would I rather a PDF version? Um, but I have to pick either or. It's either print or it's the PDF. If I pick the PDF, I'm still obviously need to get these pages printed. And one thing to point out is there is a lot of color. That's definitely a pro for kids. They're exciting, great looking pages. There is some heavy backgrounds, which might be a little concerning to somebody who is looking to print or photocopy something with the book. So um, I did go ahead and get the separate books just so that I wouldn't have to deal with trying to print all of these in color, but looking at it for more future use, the reusability of the program, you know, I have a little bit of concern of, you know, if I want to go through this unit again in a couple years, you know, where do I get these student journal pages? It's not that I have like a PDF sitting there or a way that I can just quickly photocopy them. They are very high colored. So it's really just trying to figure out what works best for your family, but know that these are definitely packed full with a lot of color. I picked the books that are grades three through six. There's a separate student journal that you could pick that are for grades seven through eight. One thing to point out with the seventh through eighth, especially if you have some experience with some of the newer Good and the Beautiful science units, they've been adding what's called extension lessons. Now for my kids, they are on the younger side, but I do have some curious kids. And sometimes we do take a look at those extension lessons. Unfortunately, those extension lessons are not included in my material. Those would have been if I would have picked the student journal that was the grade seven and eight because I have the younger journals and it's not included in the actual course book, I don't have the extension lessons to take a look at with my kids. That would be have to something that I might have to get in the future, but it's something to consider as well. As you know, I wish they would have actually maybe included the extension lessons in the actual course book so that I could have chose if I wanted to look at them or not, um, but they are not included in the actual student journals. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the book pack. You may wanna consider adding on the optional book pack from The Good and the Beautiful. It's the paleontology books that tie right to the lesson material. I went ahead and picked them up. I've been really loving the extra science books they've been offering. And so my, I know my kids will love these as well. I really enjoy the pictures, the uh, details included in these books look really great. And I love, again, that it ties really well with the lesson material. While talking about books, one thing to point out is in the old format of having sort of that shrink wrapped package, there used to be something called mini books. And most units had a handful of these mini books that you had to cut out, create, and sort of bind together to be able to read during your lesson material. That has changed a little bit with the new format. The course um, book actually includes what is considered the mini books. There are two of them included in here. So while you're going through your lesson material, you'll just go ahead and read those pages right from this book, which would have been something that previously would have been more considered 
considered a mini book. So whether you're looking for books that are inside here, or if you are looking to add on some books, you might want to consider this book pack. I hope you enjoyed going through all of this information together and really just focusing in on the new formatting. In an upcoming video, I'll definitely be sharing paleontology itself and going through a full sample lesson with you. But with this new formatting, you know, you might actually really like it. It might work really well for you, or maybe you might have some concerns with the new formatting. If you have any comments, leave those comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And before you leave, don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe, and I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.